Okay, today we're going to be fixing up this uh, 2001 Ford Super Duty two-piece shaft with the carrier bearing in the middle that's uh, making a lot of noise and I don't think the U-joints are in that great shape either. This is the front piece. <coughs> it's held on with uh, basically four 12-point uh, 12 millimeter bolts uh, that have to come off. On the on this middle section here, the carrier bearing is held on with I think it's a 13 or 14 millimeter bolt on either side, holds the bracket on. Then uh, the caps here for the U joint uh, mount to here with eight millimeter uh, bolts, and the exact same thing on the end here. Here's the clamps right here. Uh, there's an eight mil on either side of that. So we're going to be replacing all the U joints, and hopefully that carrier bearing we'll be able to pull that off it's a 33 millimeter nut that holds that yoke on that yoke's got to come off so that this can be pulled off so we'll uh, show you how it's done here's the parts you need these are the u-joints these are the three u-joints for the back and it's a moog 3030 these are greasable and these are the ones for the front shaft which i'm going to do later those are 331s and for the rear shaft yoke you need a 33 millimeter impact. So here's the yoke and the vise, and we've got some WD-40 on there. So we're going to go ahead and get that guy off. Step two. Here you can use a couple different methods. Some people alternate with a hammer on either side of this if you don't have any uh, air tools. Uh, other people go with a puller here if you can get a puller on the edge and uh, pull right off. Uh, I'm going to try something different. And as uh, just use this guy and just a really dull blade on here and, and basically just get it at a good angle here and see what happens. There we go. You can see it's a spline shaft. Um, I do have a marking on uh, the drive shaft as well as this so that it goes back on the same way. Now I'm going to tear into this uh, rubber here and hopefully get it off. I've never done this before, just uh, seen a couple videos on it. Looks like I need two screwdrivers. Maybe. Just get it in right in there. There we go. It's hard to get off. It's kind of deteriorated anyway, halfway. There we go. Okay. Now uh, you can hear how that bearing is screwed. You know, that's, that's bad. So, we're going to get a puller uh, on here, two, uh, two or three leg puller, and uh, get the sucker off. Okay, we've got the puller on here now. Just hand tight. Just make sure it's on there as good as you can, you can uh, put it. And we're going to use the air impact to get it off. And uh, put a little bit of oil in there, a little bit of oil in the end of the shaft here. And uh, see what happens. We'll go on the lowest setting first so we don't blow nothing up. Came off a lot easier than I expected. That's the old bearing. 
Uh, try to remember the orientation of it when it goes on. It's kind of a tapered shaft. We're going to clean that all up now with some brake clean and lube up the splines and everything. Okay, so here's a new bearing. You can see how quiet that is. I just pushed it on here by hand. <coughs> the flared out rubber goes to this side of the shaft. The smoothed out one goes to the other side. And you can actually, there's a, an arrow and it says FRT for front. Uh, that's the front of the vehicle. So we want to put that arrow to the front. Okay, now we got to get that uh, bearing on there. And because I don't have a hydraulic press for that. We're going to use this piece of pipe and it just turns out that this pipe perfectly hits the shoulder of that bearing and, and the hole is actually larger than the, uh, the drive shaft. So we're going to hammer that on next. It is a slight taper fit so uh, you can push it on. You know I pushed it on at least halfway here uh, onto the shaft so uh, we'll do the rest with the hammer and the pipe. a little bit more. Let's whack it good. I want to try and get it flush. there. It's not uh, going anymore. Okay. You can use grease or whatever on here. Uh, I use some of this uh, Inforce stuff. It's good lube. to go on the uh, outside here. Like, don't cross thread it. It's quite a fine thread on here. Uh, apparently it's 300 foot pounds on the tightness which I don't have a tool big enough to do so I'm just going to blast it on with the, uh, the air gun but I'm not going to go crazy on it. Some guys say to use a new one but I don't have one so uh, the old one's got to get reused here. on the lowest setting on the air gun. It's not the max torque so should be fine. <coughs> be able to get it off again one of these days. Okay now we got the center bearing on there. 
and we're going to move to the U joints. And in this particular case, let's see if there's any markings. I'll have to put some markings on the shaft. <clears throat> but these are nice. They don't have the clips on the inside here. The clips right here, so you can basically just grab it. But of course, these are rusted in there like hell. So I'm going to get some WD on there first and get all these to loosen up. So I got some WD-40 on there, and uh, I think they're going to need some love taps to get them loose. The new U-joints come with new clips, so you want to get these out. Just tap them a little bit, side to side. to try and peel one out of there somehow later on because that's no good. Well, it was rusted in there pretty good. These are the uh, originals. There we go. That's it. It's one. There we go. Okay. Now we go to the next step. Okay, now we just want to mark it so that we put the flange in the correct spot after we replace that U joint. Because these shafts are balance assembly. Okay, now we got the front shaft back in here, but uh, the other way around. And we're going to replace this U-joint. I guess there's a few ways you can do it. I'm just going to smack it right here on the ear. And hopefully this is going to... It's all loose in here. You're just resting this part on the vise. You don't want to clamp down the shaft or anything for this. The next one now. It's a little harder. Okay. I'll clean that up nice. <clears throat> Get the new ones in there. Also check the little snap ring grooves here. Make sure there's no excessive dirt in there.
Okay. Just going to use a bit of the Enforce. Not a lot, just a little bit. It'll make it easier for the, the new one to go in. So here's the new ball joint. It's a Moog 330 and it comes with uh, clips and a Zerk fitting so <clears throat> while we've got it on the bench here we're going to put the Zerk fitting in but don't shoot any grease in there until this thing is fully mounted otherwise you'll just be pushing those needle bearings out of there and give you nothing but headaches. You don't want any excess grease in there right now. Okay so on these Zerk fittings you got to be really careful because uh, it doesn't take a lot to over torque these things so if you're not sure use a really small uh, wrench this one seems to be an eight millimeter just you know don't don't go nuts because you will strip this out not the housing but the, uh, the zerk fitting itself okay now, if you think you can go another quarter turn, don't bother because you're going to strip that. There we go. Now we're going to put this guy in here. And the way you do that, is just put that in there slowly. Get this in here first. Push that in there. On the next side. If you can push it in by hand, excellent. If not, don't worry about it. So it's just balanced loose now. We're going to use the vise to do all the work. Hopefully your vise is big enough. I think this one's barely big enough. Just make sure it's uh, it's centered in there and it's not it's not coming out. You don't want this to drop down and get out of those needle bearings. Oh, that's tough. part of it. It might jump around a bit because of the way these things are in there. A little bit of lube helps that I added before. Still good. One side's going in before the other. That's fine. That's normal. You can only, you can't go in all the way like this. You can only go flush with those ears. Okay. Now we're flush with the ears. We'll pop that back out. Close up the vise here. You can see it's, it's flush here, but they gotta go in a bit more because uh, we're putting those C-clips in, so you can use a hammer or whatever else to get them in the rest of the way. I'm going to use uh, a socket that fits in there. So you want a socket that's the exact size of the the top, the cap here. You don't want to get one that's the size of the ear or you're just going to hammer the ear. Okay, so we got a socket that's the right size and we're just going to hammer that down so we can get the clip in there. There we go, that's it. Now we got to do the same thing on the other side here.
There we go. Okay, now we're going to install that in our shaft. <coughs> Same thing here, I want to clean this guy out a bit. The last one, those circlips didn't go in all that nice on one side, so really got to clean that stuff out here. Ooh, it's got some burrs on there. So I had the needle bearings pop out on one side. I've just uh, had the U-joint drop down into here, hammer in the bottom cap, and uh, we're going to do the same on the top. And just basically slide that up enough that those bearings aren't going to come out. There we go. Now, I'm just going to get that on there. And hammer those guys in. Okay, so we got the front shaft done. We got our carrier bearing and we got our new U-joint in there. We'll grease it all up when we got on the truck, I guess. Uh, right now we're going to mount this front shaft back into the truck and then we're going to work on the rear section after that. So there's all my nuts and bolts. I just did this in the carport. So what I did was I drove to the parts store with front wheel drive. As you can see there, the uh, drive shaft is disconnected. And there's nothing there, it's just a flange, output flange. So you can actually run this thing in front wheel drive. And uh, I had some binding noises and weirdness in the front uh, doing that. So I'm going to replace the U joints in the front shaft as well. And I also have to do one of the ball joint sides still, as well as uh, U joints in that uh, rear shaft. So we'll get in here and uh, block the wheels and get going. Okay, there's a flange, there's our bolts, the shaft, and the other two big bolts are right there, which is uh, going right there in that bracket. So we're going between this bracket and this flange for the uh, front shaft. Okay, so I just got a couple bolts real uh, loose in here. You can see it's still totally loosey-goosey. And these two are really loose in there. So I did these two here first, and then I held up the shaft and put a couple in here by hand. That's the uh, the 12 millimeter, 12 point hex nuts. So I'm just going to tighten that all up, and then we'll get to the rear portion of the shaft for the U joint replacement. Okay, same thing here. I'm not really going to show you how to do this, but it's all the same as before. We're going to pull out the clips here. Same on the back, hammer them out, hammer them back in. It's the exact same procedure, and uh, there's, n there's nothing special about this one. I'm not going to repack this just because I don't have these clamps here, 
if you have these clamps, you know, it's best to pull this out and repack it. There's no play in here and it slides back and forth, so I'm just going to leave it for now.